Hello, my name's uh, Dr. Paul Richardson, and I'm the uh, Director of uh, Clinical Research and the Clinical Program Leader of the Jerome Lipper Multiple Myeloma Center at Dana-Farber Cancer Institute in Boston, Massachusetts. And it's my pleasure to talk to you uh, today about some very exciting new data um, on an, an important new agent, we believe, in the treatment of relapsed refractory multiple myeloma. Now, this agent specifically is melflufen, which is a novel targeted cytotoxic peptide drug conjugate um, it has a specific mechanism where it's rapidly taken up by plasma cells due to its high lipophilicity. And in that context, once inside the tumor cell, aminopeptidases cleave the compound, release the alkylating warhead, which in this case is melphalan, where it causes maximal DNA damage to the myeloma, but in a highly selective way. Now, very interestingly, in the context of myeloma, it's important to recognize that it's enriched for aminopeptidases on the one hand, and on the other hand, um, this lipophilic mechanism is tremendously important because obviously when you think about traditional alkylating agents such as melphalan, they're actually lipophobic. So this ability to target stemness in the tumor cell may be particularly important. And our current dosing and schedule is very convenient, particularly in the COVID era, with an IV infusion um, every four weeks and partnered typically with dexamethasone, with combination studies particularly exciting. And as I think many folks are aware, we were granted FDA priority review for this agent in August of last year in 2020, and we're very much hoping for an accelerated approval uh, in a month or so uh, uh, in the early part of 2021. Now, why so? Well, I think this is based upon the exciting data that we derived from the Horizon trial, and especially want to acknowledge my co-investigators in this international multi-center trial, in which we enrolled 157 patients with relapsed and refractory myeloma enriched for triple-class refractory disease and also for extramandullary disease, in whom, unfortunately, typically daratumumab or other CD38 targeting antibody therapy had failed them. And what we found was that there was a consistent overall response rate of 29% uh, in the triple class refractory population in particular, and importantly, in the extramedullary disease population, um, we found that the response rate was 24% as rigorously defined. Now, this is actually very interesting because in the setting of extramedullary disease, response rates of that order of magnitude after all other classes of drug have failed the patient, are really, really quite unusual and are not, frankly not seen. So we think this was a, a particularly important finding of the trial. So if we look at, at the intent to treat population uh, overall, the 157 patients, the overall response rate was 29%, minimal response or better in 45%. And as I mentioned in specific subgroups, um, in the triple class refractory population, um, the response rate was 26%, and in the EMD population, 24%, and these were confirmed by an independent review committee. Now, what was exciting to see was also that these were durable responses um, that pro were prolonged over time, um, despite the refractory nature of the patients. And if you look at that in terms of uh, establishing uh, data to support that position, it's important to note that the median duration of response on the intent to treat population was five and a half months. If you look at the triple class refractory group, it was actually four and a half months. And in the extramedullary disease group, which is particularly important in our view, again, it was actually encouraging at 5.5 months. And the survivals uh, re re reflected that as well. In the triple class refractory population, we saw a median survival of around 11.2 months with an intent to treat analysis showing the overall survival to be approaching one year. Now, fully recognizing that if you looked at those patients who responded and did well, survivals were much greater. And for those patients who were refractory, of course, um, they were shorter. But that being said, the tolerability profile was also very consistent. We saw myelosuppression as the dominant problem. Um, we also saw that otherwise non-hematologic side effects were very uncommon. And the myelosuppression proved very manageable. Rates of infection were low. Rates of any significant bleeding were actually minuscule. And in that context, we were very pleased by the fact that there was no alopecia, uh, there was no significant mucositis seen at all. And basically, apart from some uh, mild to moderate fatigue, non-hematologic toxicity was very, very uncommon, pointing to the tolerability of this platform. Now, I think what's particularly exciting about uh, uh, melflufen is also when we looked at high-risk cytogenetics, 
we saw a signal, particularly in the 17p deleted population, for which relapsed refractory disease is enriched. And what was particularly in encouraging too, was that this year's ASH, there was a fabulous oral presentation from my colleague Enrique Osio, where Enrique presented the preliminary data on the ANCA study, where melflufin was combined with dexamethasone and daratumumab or bortezomib in relapsed and refractory disease. And what was very important to note was that whilst grade three, four treatment emergent adverse events were mostly hematological and manageable with dose reductions, there were no dose limiting toxicities observed across both regimens and melflufin dose levels studied. The overall response rates in this highly refractory population were encouraging. For those who were receiving daratumumab in combination with melflufen, the overall response rate was 73%. And for those receiving bortezomib, recognizing that these obviously were patients who had had prior proteasome inhibition as part of their therapy together with immunomodulatory treatment, the response rate was impressive at 62%. And then when you looked at the median progression-free survival, we were particularly struck by this. In the daratumumab group, it was almost 13 months, 12.9 months to be precise, with melflufen at 30 milligrams recommended as the combinatorial dose. So that in this population we think is a promising early signal. And in fact, on the bortezomib arm of the study, that is still actively recruiting, and we're very much hoping um, to see a similar signal emerge in that setting to warrant um, this particular platform being taken forward. So in aggregate, we're very encouraged by the data that we've seen so far with melflufen as an important new addition with a novel mechanism of action, um, which can help us in our uh, ongoing challenges, ongoing battles against relapsed refractory disease.